can pull in contacts from any number of sources, um, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Gmail, and uh, Windows Live and Exchange as well. So I have some Gmail contacts pulled in. I also have a number of other accounts linked up here. But right now they're filtered, so as you can't see them, I can change that, of course, and say which contacts I want to show. So maybe I'll show some of the uh, Facebook contacts in there as well. You see a lot more things here. You can tap on any of the letters to get a, a map of all the letters that are being used. So you can quickly skip to the R's, for example. Let's see, uh, Russ. Swipe left and right, and it'll pull in feeds um, from all your different services. Show you what's going on. Recently contacted ones. And back to the main menu. It's also group support, so you can define groups and uh, put live tiles on the home screen and see just status updates for those members of the group, which is really cool. I'm going to jump into the app highlights tile here. I'll show you some recommended applications, and I'm going to shake the device, and you see it'll pick new ones each time I shake it, which is pretty cool. You can also just uh, manually scroll through and pick one. Say I'm going to install Netflix. You'll see it start loading here in the main menu while it's doing so. I'm going to go back to the start screen, pull up the web browser. It's a page on the Mobile Burn website. Everything works pretty well. I'll pull that up in the uh, mobile version of the site too so you can see what it looks like. jump in here you can see your favorites and I go to say Nokia support just for something different and I'm also going to open up a new tab there we go go back into favorites and uh, grab the mobile burn site perhaps and see how quickly it loads. No flash or silver light support though. Pretty fast on the zooming and scrolling. Nice and smooth. Quite impressive overall, although with the, uh, the without having the uh, WebKit extensions that are used in a lot of uh, high-end mobile sites, you'll miss out occasionally. But still, quite a nice browser, and um, I've not seen it work better than this on any other Windows Phone device. Go to the Zune player, take a look at some of the uh, music I pre-installed on the device. Uh, I go to, say, Front 242 here. Tap here to get to the full list. Plays in the background naturally. Can turn off the device and uh, turn it back on. You'll see music controls right here on the lock screen. And of course, if I hold down the back button, I can get into the task switcher so I can see all the things that are running on the device and just tap through to one of them. Quick look at the calendar. See, there's a bunch of different views of the calendar. You have to-do lists as well as the agenda view of the calendar. And you can tap down here to uh, get the full month view. And you'll even notice that everything is actually written there. The text is um, almost readable depending on the size of the screen. You can tap on any particular day then to see what's going on for that day. You can have uh, calendar data coming in from Facebook, from Gmail, and from Exchange. And they'll each be color coded so you could see you know, which event was coming from which data source. One of the great things about Windows Phone is even when the device is turned off or you're at the lock screen, you can just long press the camera shutter button to activate it. So here you can see I'm uh, taking a picture of uh, one of my son's books. Press halfway to focus. All the way to take the picture. Take a couple others just so you can see what the film strip view looks like. As I mentioned previously, 8 megapixel stills. So you can see I just swipe left to immediately get into the images. 
no better way to do it than that. And when you pinch it, you get a film strip view, which is really cool. And notice that that is the live image in the camera mixed in there, which is really slick. You can switch over to video mode, record 720p HD video. And now we're recording a quick video, and I'll stop it and play it back. One of the weird things about uh, Windows Phone that's not been addressed in the Mango update is the volume control. Everything is tied to a single volume control. So media playback such as videos, ringtones, everything on a single volume control, which is kind of annoying. I do have uh, quick access to switching it to um, different vibrate modes, so right from the uh, status update or one, the notification area that pops up when you hit the volume control. And of course, I went into the camera, but I didn't go into the pictures application, which uh, does a bit more. You can see the background's automatically been set to one of my own photos here. I can go into the camera roll and see that, but uh, we don't really have too much there. Go through, you can have favorites, so let's go back into camera roll and I'll grab one of these and I'm going to mark it as a favorite. And then you'll see when I swipe over here, there will be the favorite. It'll pull in things from your social networking sites as well. And see photos that people have uploaded. Let's take a look at this one. I don't know who these people are, but there you go. And I also like how you can access pictures based on the date. It's a pretty interesting view. Of course, flip through again. See photos just of particular people. The marketplace tile will just take us back to the marketplace, which is where we were. When we were looking at the uh, highlighted apps. I'm going to go into games, and I'm going to search now. Notice I'm going to tap on the on-screen button and not down here on the actual touch-sensitive button down here. You do this, I can type, say, I'll do chess, or I'll try to do chess from behind the camera here. And we should get a bunch of chess games, right? But if I tap the search button, it actually gets me to regular Bing search. At which point, if I were to type chess, if I were capable of it, You might also see applications surfaced in the results, but you're going to get web-based results as well. You can switch through and get to local results. Of course, you're not going to find local results for chess, but we might for pizza. And you can see, shows the maps and local pizza places, and you still have local web search as well, and you can also see that there's a Pizza Hut app available. And I'm sure you can get pictures of pizza as well. I had wanted to show you the Nokia music player uh, just because it's a little unusual that two music apps will be on the same device. But you can see I'm having problems loading it. It starts to load and then just uh, kind of craps out on me. It had been working earlier though, and there were some subtle differences uh, that made it worth pointing out, but fortunately I can't show that to you right now. You can see the me tile down here. This is um, you know, all of my contact records from various sources, LinkedIn. And I can uh, post a message. You can see I can set which service it's going to go out to. Um, I'm just going to do it to Windows Live since I don't really do that, and this is a test message, so I'll just say test. Notice it'll autocorrect there. Post that out, and it will go to my Windows Live account. And you see there it says test. You can see all notifications coming from social networks and everything. back to the profile. Take a look at the main menus. There's a few things in here that uh, aren't on the start screen. Uh, contacts transfer is a good example. It allows you to uh, pull in contacts from an existing uh, previous device uh, over Bluetooth, which I think is pretty slick. You see we've also got Bing Maps on here. Uh, of course, Nokia highlights their own Nokia Maps, but uh, Bing Maps is also available. It's the Netflix app that I installed myself. Office is pretty cool. It's a very, very good Microsoft Office support here. Uh, you can create uh, new OneNotes. Uh, you can handle documents, all sorts of great things. 
really it's a good system and it's, it links in with uh, you know Microsoft's SkyDrive and Office 365. If you're uh, into Office Docs, this is a really fine way to access them. So that's my look at the Nokia Lumia 800. It is by far the best overall Windows Phone device that's ever been created. It's really fantastic. Great hardware, uh, great software, just great looking. Everything about it is a great experience. It's, just, it's really smooth. It just seems to be the best that's been offered um, with Microsoft's Windows Phone so far. This particular device has a couple of bugs. It's still a prototype. It's not running final firmware, but um, you know, I really expect this to be a very good selling device and I think it might actually allow Nokia and Microsoft to save each other, um, which would really be nice. So again, that's the Nokia Lumia 800 running Windows Phone 7.5 Mango. For MobileBurn.com, I'm Michael Oral. Thanks for watching.